Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to 2A News Now, and I really appreciate you taking your time tuning into my video. Yesterday was a pretty eventful day in Second Amendment news. Late yesterday, a judge said not only Firearms Policy Coalition members are exempt from the pistol brace rule, but also the Second Amendment Foundation members. And then this morning when I woke up, Gun Owners of America members are also included in that as well. The ATF's new rules requiring owners of pistol stabilizing braces to either register their brace equipped pistols with the federal government or destroy slash permanently disable. The braces is now in effect, but hundreds of thousands of gun owners across the country are exempt from that edict, for at least now anyway, thanks to lawsuits brought by Firearms Policy Coalition and the Second Amendment Foundation and Gun Owners of America. Last week, a panel on the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals granted an emergency injunction against the new rule, as it applies to the named plaintiffs in the case, called Mock v. Garland. And while there is some initial confusion about the scope of that ruling, the judge later clarified that the injunction covers not only Maximum Defense and FPC as an entity, but all FPC members as well. On Wednesday, just hours before the ATF rule went into effect. A second judge issued a similar ruling in a case called SAF versus ATF, clarifying that her own recent injunction applies to all members of the Second Amendment Foundation as well. And then, like I said, when I woke up earlier this morning, Gun Owners of America tweeted out that their members are now part of the injunction as well. And of course, this is very good news. And not just for Firearm Policy Coalition and Second Amendment Foundation, and Gun Owners of America members, though obviously they're immediate beneficiaries of these judicial determinations by including the membership of these organizations in the injunction. The Fifth Circuit panel and Judge Boyle are acknowledging the real harm that will come to law-abiding gun owners if the ATF rule is enforced against them. Going forward, FPC and SAF and GOA attorneys will be able to point to these rulings in their continued efforts to undo the new rule completely because every person who purchased a stabilizing brace under the ATS previous and long-standing determination that stabilizing braces by themselves did not turn a brace equipped pistol into a short barrel rifle is now impacted by their 180 degree reversal. Would it have been better if the Fifth Circuit panel or Judge Boyle simply granted an injunction against any enforcement of the rule while it's being challenged in court? Sure, of course it would. But that would have been an even more extraordinary step. At this early stage in the legal process, the wheels of justice grind slowly, but they're turning in our direction when it comes to the new stabilizing brace rule. And hopefully the hundreds of thousands of individuals now under the umbrella of these injunctions will soon be joined by millions of other Americans who lawfully purchased and possessed their braces but are now at risk of federal prosecution and a 10-year prison sentence if they keep them without registering their weapon under the National Firearms Act. Of course, these are huge wins, but we need and we demand the ultimate win, and that's a judge finding that the ATF pistol brace rule is unconstitutional and tosses it in the trash where it should be and stop trying to punish millions of law-abiding citizens because of the acts of few. Please let me know your thoughts about today's video in the comment section down below. And I will never stop thanking everybody in every one of my videos for supporting my channel. And you guys do that just by watching the videos and liking, sharing, and subscribing and hitting those post notifications. I really do appreciate it. And let's keep it up in the month of June and beyond. And I invite everybody back to see my next video.